We'd like to graph the function y equals 5 minus quantity 2x plus 6 squared. We're going to do this by determining the parent function, stating the argument, rearranging the argument if necessary to determine the values of the variables that affect horizontal transformations, then rearranging the function equation if necessary to determine values of a and c which affect vertical transformations. Then we're going to state the transformations in an appropriate order and we're then going to graph the curve in three different ways. Method 1 showing each transformation, method 2 using a table to determine coordinates, and method 3 using the transformation formula, also known as the machine, to determine coordinates of the function. So first things first, the parent function in this case is y equals x squared. The argument is 2x plus 6, that's the quantity being squared. Well, what we'd like to do is determine, uh, is factor out the leading coefficient and determine the k and the d values. So 2x plus 6 is the same as 2 bracket x plus 3, which means our k value is 2 and our d value is negative 3 because it's always k bracket x minus d. What we can then do is determine the a and c values. So um, we can factor out the 2 to get our argument to look like this. Then take this term of 5, bring it to the other side, and what we have is an a value of negative 1 and a c value of 5. So then we can state the transformations verbally. The horizontal transformations are given by the k and the d. Since k is 2, we have a horizontal compression by a factor of a half. And since d is negative 3, we have a translation 3 units left. With respect to the vertical, since a is negative 1, we have a reflection in the x-axis, and since c is 5, we have a translation 5 units up. We're then going to try to show each of these transformations individually. We begin with the parent function. The parent function is y equals x squared, and it has these coordinate points. Our first job will be to show what happens when we have a horizontal compression by a factor of a half. Well, what happens specifically is that we multiply each x-coordinate by one-half in order to bring it twice as close to the y-axis. So, uh, zero, zero stays zero, zero, but one, one becomes one-half one. Negative one, one becomes negative one-half one. Two, four becomes one, four. Negative two, four becomes negative one, four. We can then uh, ignore our black curve and simply focus on the pink curve which is right there. And this is what our function looks like one transformation into a four transformation process. What we're then going to do is consider what happens when we translate this curve three units to the left. Well, zero, zero gets moved to negative three, zero. One half one gets moved to negative five halves one. And now admittedly it gets a little confusing here, but this point of negative one-half one where my finger is gets translated three units over to negative seven-halves one. One-four becomes negative two-four, and negative one-four, which is where my finger is, gets moved over to negative four-four. We can then ignore the uh, pink curve and focus on the green. And there we go. So we're now two transformations into our four transformation process. We're now going to consider what happens when we reflect this in the x-axis. Reflecting it in the x-axis basically means multiplying each y-coordinate by negative 1. Negative 3, 0 gets moved to negative 3, 0, but here's where the changes start happening. Negative 5 halves 1 gets moved to negative 5 halves negative 1. Negative 2, 4 gets moved to negative 2, negative 4. Negative 7 halves 1 gets moved to negative 7 halves negative 1 and negative 4, 4 gets moved to negative 4, negative 4. Now that we have the coordinates of these points, we can ignore the green curve and focus on the blue. And we're now three transformations in to a four transformation process. Our last one is going to be to translate everything up five units. Well, that means we're going to take every y coordinate and add five to it. So negative 2, negative 4 becomes negative 2, 1. Negative 5 halves negative 1 becomes negative 5 halves 4. Negative 3, 0 becomes negative 3, 5. Similar thing happens on the other side of the parabola to the other branch. And
And we can now ignore the blue curve and focus on the red. We've now graphed the curve y equals negative quantity 2 uh, x plus 3 and actually there's a little typo here the squared here should actually be out here my bad uh, plus 5 okay so if we were to look at every one of those happening at once it would look like that and that is probably pretty confusing to look at now method number two is the chart method and what we do here is we take points on the parent function and then we figure algebraically the effect of every one of these four variable values and so in our case since the k value was two we divide each x coordinate by two leave the y coordinates the same we then deal with D, but remember, notice that we're never changing the value of the Y coordinate in the K or the D column because K and D represent horizontal transformations, not vertical transformations. When we get to A and C though, when we think about these columns, our um, horizontal coordinates are locked into place and so we're only going to be affecting Y coordinates in the last two columns. What we then have are the transformed points over here, the image points, and we can graph them. I find it helpful to graph the parent curve first, then to graph the points of the image curve, and then I know what the general behavior of the curve is. My um, origin is 0, 0, so I go to the image of that origin, and I know that it acts as a vertex and so I can then trace a parabola using that as a vertex through the points that I've graphed. Another method of finding those points is what's called the transformation machine or the transformation formula which I call the machine. We know that a equals negative 1, k is 2, d is negative 3, and c is 5. Well every point on the parent function can be put through this machine and the new image points come up automatically. So negative 2, 4 becomes negative 4, 1. Negative 1, 1 becomes negative 7 halves 4. 0, 0 becomes negative 3, 5. 1, 1 becomes negative 5 halves 4. And 2, 4 becomes negative 2, 5. How does that happen? Well, for instance, what we do here, let's look at the last one, 2, 4. What um, we always have in the machine, x, y, mapping onto x over k plus d, a, y plus c. So that tells me that the x coordinate I'm thinking about here is 2, which it is. The k value is 2 and the d value is negative 3. We learned that earlier on a previous page. Then we have a, which is negative 1 from a previous page, times the y coordinate in question, which is 4, plus c, which we determined to be 5 on a previous page. And when we bash this out algebraically, we get 1 minus 3, comma, negative 4 plus 5, that becomes negative 2, 5. That same process is carried out for each of the points on the parent function. What we then get is an ability to plot those points here on the graph, we can then draw our parent function to remind ourselves what that looks like. That move is not necessary, but you know, some people find it helpful. And then what we do is we graph from there, um, following the general behavior of this parabola, recognizing that the vertex, which was 0, 0, is now the image of 0, 0. And um, we just follow the general behavior.